The Akatsuki is arguably the most well-known and beloved villain group in all of anime. Not only are they drip to the max, they're also some of the strongest characters in the Naruto world. In fact, every member of the Akatsuki is an S-class criminal, and each two-person unit is capable of taking down a tailed beast. However, even in a group full of monstrous individuals, there's always a cream of the crop, baddest of the bad, strongest of the strong. In the Akatsuki, though, there has always been a generous amount of debate as to who exactly the top dog is. Generally, the discussion of who is the strongest Akatsuki member boils down to three characters, Itachi, Pain, and Obito. So today, I'll be examining each of these characters, looking at the abilities, statements, and overall showings for each of them, and coming to a decisive conclusion as to who the top dog in the Akatsuki truly is. If you'd like for me to do a more in-depth breakdown of my full Akatsuki ranking list, let me know in the comments. Before we begin though, if you enjoy this type of content, feel free to like and subscribe. I post on YouTube at least once every other week, if not every week, and I post on my TikTok almost every single day. So feel free to check that out as well. But without any further ado, let's jump into the video. I'd like to start by acknowledging that all of these characters are incredibly powerful in their own right, and all of them have a legitimate claim to the top spot in the Akatsuki, whether that be statements or through feats. That being said, when the margins are so close, the tiniest of details matter. However, in an effort to try and keep this video to a reasonable length, I'll mostly be comparing and contrasting each of our contenders' strengths and weaknesses that could sway the fight in one direction or another. I'd also like to specify which forms I'll be using here. For Itachi, we'll be looking at Alive Itachi, but we're going to be assuming that his sickness isn't as far along as it was when we see him fight Sasuke. So, while he will be inhibited by his disease, he won't be basically on his last legs taking drugs to prolong his life. Looking at it that way will at least allow for us to look at some of his physical feats during the war arc, because we know that during that fight, he wasn't at full physical strength. For Pain, we'll be looking at the six paths of Pain. I'd like to do a Nagato vs Itachi video in the future, seeing as that's a really hotly debated topic, so we'll save that for then. And finally, for Obito, we'll be using pre-Renigon Obito, as when he has the Renigon, it's really not that close, so I, I want this to be competitive, but he has access to all of his ordinary abilities like Kamui and plus a spare Sharingan for Izanagi, but none of the Renigon abilities. And we're only going to be looking at Obito's physical stamina feats from before getting the Rinnegan, as we know the Rinnegan boosts your chakra. For the structure of this video, I'll be breaking down all three characters section by section and ranking them accordingly. So to start, let's take a look at each of our characters' physical abilities. And quickly though, I'd like to point out that Pain's physical scaling is weird because each of the paths of Pain seem to have their own individual physical stats. So when doing this scaling, I'll primarily be looking at the Asura and Diva paths and disregarding any of the rest of the paths as being lower than both Obito and Itachi in all things physical. That said, let's jump into the scaling. In terms of speed, Obito and Itachi should have slightly superior speed to Pain, with the former scaling to the likes of KCM Naruto, Killer B, Guy, and War Art Kakashi, while Pain seems to be right around the Sage Mode Naruto range, who should be slower than his KCM counterpart. I will say though, the Asura path being able to essentially blitz a Raikiri Kakashi from across the map, who matched a 6 gate guy's speed during the War Arc, is incredibly impressive. But seeing as he was off-panel, so we really don't know how much ground he covered, we can't really take that as much of anything, but it, again, it looks pretty impressive. In terms of strength, all of these characters are pretty relative, all being able to grapple with high-level combatants and never really struggling to keep up in the strength department. If you're going to give an edge to anyone here, it's probably pain due to the Asura path being able to take off Sage Mode Jiraiya's arm, but even then, that's not that great of a feat, so we'll just call strength a wash. As far as physical durability goes though, I think there's a pretty clear advantage here for Pain. A quick disclaimer though, Itachi Susano won't be considered here since this is physical durability, but it will be touched on later. Uh, to be honest though, his physical durability feats are relatively mundane when comparing him against other high-level characters. He was able to, it appears, no-sell a fireball from Sasuke that blew a hole through the roof of the Uchiha hideout, but other than that, he's not exactly a tank without the Susano. Obito has his regeneration and Kamui hacks, but is able to be damaged pretty badly by just punches from Kakashi. And Kakashi's strong, but you know, he, he's not out here punching through mountains, so his raw durability isn't that crazy. Pain, on the other hand, is a tank. The Asura path was capable of tanking the shock from Kakashi's lightning clone, and then getting hammer-fisted, pause, smashed, pause, 
Um, downward punched by Choji and Choza while still being able to blitz Kakashi's lightning blade after that from, again, probably across the map, and then still being able to use a missile in an attempt to take down Choji after all of that. And we all know how tanky the Diva Path is. This dude not only took direct blows from Sage Mode Naruto, but also survived a blast from a basically point-blank range Six Tails Naruto Bijou Dama. So yeah, while one of the Paths of Pain was able to be taken down by a Kid Konohamaru's Rasengan, when it comes to the Asura and Diva Paths who engage in most of the close quarters combat, they are absolute tanks. Finally, we're going to go over Chakra and Stamina, and I'll make this one quick since it's probably pretty obvious. Nagato, being an Uzumaki, wins this. He has a gigantic Chakra supply, so Stamina is no issue for the Paths of Pain in battle. Itachi's body is actively trying to kill him, so he comes last in this category, and Obito falls comfortably in the middle. The Hashirama cells grafted onto him boost his chakra and overall stamina to a significant degree, making it to where he doesn't even have to eat or drink, which is pretty insane. But Nagato could wield two Renegon, while Obito said wielding one nearly made him lose his mind. So I don't think there's really any debate about who's got better chakra and stamina here. To conclude the physical stats section of the video, Obito and Itachi should be relative in terms of speed since they scale to the same combatants pretty consistently, with Pain being slightly slower than both of them. The strength of these three is pretty relative, with no decisive advantage either way, and the physical durability as well as stamina go decisively to Pain. So the physical stats section goes to the six paths of Pain. That said, we're on to Ninjutsu and Hacks. As a quick note, I'm putting Ninjutsu and Hacks both in the same section, since basically half of each of these characters' arsenals are Hacks. That said, this is truly where these characters shine. The arsenals these three possess are absolutely ridiculous, and as I said, each of them possess a fair amount of Hacks in their arsenals that could provide them clear win conditions. I'm basically just going to hit the highlights here, as I'd like to make a more in-depth breakdown of all their abilities down the line. For Itachi Uchiha, we all know his ninjutsu arsenal is one of the most lethal in the series. His Susano grants him a nearly impenetrable defense, along with the combination of the Totsuka Blade and Yadamir spirit weapons, which, upon seeing them, prompted Zetsu to call him invincible. To go along with his legendary spirit weapons, Itachi boasts not only some of the best regular fire-style ninjutsu in the series, but also the Amaterasu, which just might be the single most lethal fire-based attack we've ever seen. And on top of that, Itachi possesses the only genjutsu we've ever seen kill a person, the infamous Tsukiyomi. And to round it all off, Itachi can use both Izanagi and Izanami, stacking more hacks on top of his already lengthy list of hacks abilities. Somehow though, Pain's arsenal is arguably even better. With the Renegon, Pain can use the Diva Path, controlling attractive and repulsive forces, the Asura Path, granting him a variety of mechanical weapons, the Preta Path, allowing him to absorb Chakra, the Animal Path, giving him access to absolutely menacing animal summons, the Human Path, allowing him to literally rip out your soul, and the Naraka Path, giving him the ability to revive any of the paths that has been taken down in battle. On top of all of that, all of the paths have shared vision, making them practically immune to sneak attacks. Also, if Nagato chooses to do so, he can pour all of his energy into one of the paths, making them significantly more powerful, such as when he singled out the Diva Path and leveled Konoha with a chaotic Shinra Tensei. Basically, the only thing the Renegon doesn't allow you to do is see through smoke, apparently. And finally, for Obito's Jutsu Arsenal, it's a bit less broad, but just as potent. For starters, Obito possesses Kamui, which allows him to teleport parts of himself or all of himself into the Kamui dimension, effectively making himself intangible. He can also teleport his enemies into the Kamui dimension, trapping them there with no means of escape. And on top of that, Obito has access to wood style via the Hashirama cells grafted onto his body, which allows him to use very powerful wood style jutsu in battle. And if that's not enough, his fire style ninjutsu is also no joke, even being able to combine it with Kamui to make it more potent. We actually see him use fire style in conjunction with Madara Uchiha, and side by side, they look basically identical, so the dude is a monster. 
Obito is also capable of casting incredibly effective Genjutsu, being able to control the full Ninetales with just his base Sharingan, as well as Yagura, who is said to have mastery over his tailed beast, which could mean he's a perfect Jinjuriki, but it's not entirely clear. And, of course, Obito always has a spare Sharingan in his left eye in case he needs to use Izanagi to get out of a bind. Like, you know, 10 billion paper bombs. That being said, with arsenals like that, these guys are absolute smoke demons. I mean, they can get all the smoke all the time and they do not care. Their arsenals also all present unique issues for all of the enemies that they face. Itachi might have the best arsenal in the series for taking out opponents quickly with his basically guaranteed one-shot abilities in Amaterasu, the Totsuka Blade, and Tsukiyomi. Pain's arsenal is arguably the most versatile in the series, possessing powerful defensive and offensive capabilities with practically zero weaknesses. And Obito's arsenal, while not as broad as the other two here, is arguably one of the most hacks arsenals due to possessing Kamui. But out of these absolute juggernauts, who has the best arsenal? I'd say it's probably up for debate, as it really depends on the opponents these characters are facing. However, the moveset that probably leads to the highest overall chance of victory has got to be Obito's. I mean, let's be honest. Kamui is absolutely busted. Having an ability that both doesn't allow you to get hit and all but guarantees a one-shot victory if you touch your opponent, unless you're fighting another time-spaced ninjutsu user like Minato, is incredibly handy. A plus when it comes to just ninjutsu and hacks, when facing the other two, Obito's Kamui gives him a workaround for basically everything that they have. I mean, Shinra Tensei, Kamui. Bansho Tenin, Kamui. Uh, the Chewbacca Tensei. Kamui, any of the missiles the Ostra Path can shoot. Kamui, any of the animal summons. Kamui, I mean, I mean, it's Kamui, Kamui, Kamui. He has a counter to everything Pain can throw, and when you look at, like, Amaterasu, he can Kamui out of that. And as far as his Genjutsu prowess, it being as strong as it is, you could make a legitimate argument that Itachi's Genjutsu, even the Tsukiyomi, wouldn't even work on him, nullifying basically any advantage he might have. And before anyone says, oh, you forgot about the Totsuka Blade, the data books state that it plunges anyone it pierces into the world of drunken dreams, meaning it would have to pierce Obito. And seeing how Kamui is passive, meaning it happens even without Obito thinking about it, that wouldn't happen. So the ninjutsu and hack section has got to go to Obito. For the third and final section of the video, we'll be going over intelligence. And to be more specific, I'm referring to in-battle tactical intelligence. And all three of these combatants are geniuses, especially when it comes to long-term planning. However, in terms of actual battle IQ and tactics, the edge clearly goes to Itachi. While Nagato is incredibly smart, he doesn't really display a lot of great battle IQ feats. I mean, he does use the pains creatively sometimes, but he usually resorts to just overpowering and overwhelming his opponents with the wide array of abilities that the Six Paths of Pain offers him. And Obito does have some pretty good battle IQ feats, namely using his Kamui against Danzo's guards to make their abilities be used against one another, and using the chains against Minato to ensnare him after phasing through him, making it easier for him to trap him in Kamui, which only doesn't work because Minato can teleport. I mean, literally anyone else would have gotten caught with that. That said, Itachi is in a different league altogether. And not only is he arguably the best long-term strategist here, He's also the best mid-battle strategist here by a country mile. I'll just run through a few of his feats quickly. During the war arc, Itachi took advantage of the fact that he had sealed a crow with Kodo Matsukami inside of Naruto to free himself from the Edo Tensei, which nobody else other than Madara was capable of doing. In his fight against Kabuto, one of the smartest characters in the series, Itachi creates a strategy to pin Kabuto down and another strategy to break himself and Sasuke out of Kabuto's Genjutsu. He then had to go through a very very detailed plan and execute it exactly perfectly twice in order to trap Kabuto in the Izanami. And last but not least, Itachi is the one who figured out the weakness of Nagato's Chibaku Tensei. So again, dude is smart. In conclusion, Itachi has a pretty decisive intellect advantage while Obito would be second and Nagato slash Pain would fall behind him. So as a quick overview, out of these three characters, Pain has the physical advantage over both Itachi and Obito, with Obito probably coming in second and Itachi last because of his debilitating disease. Obito has the advantage in terms of ninjutsu and hacks, with both of the other two having pretty crazy arsenals themselves. And Itachi clears them both in intelligence, but that doesn't mean that either of them are dumb, he's just easily one of the top five smartest characters in the series. 
So with them all taking one category apiece, who really is the strongest in the Akatsuki? Well, in the world of Naruto, physical stats are important, but if they were the most important, Might Guy and Tsunade would have been running things for a while now. And of course, intelligence is a key factor in almost every victory, but if it were the main determining factor, Shikamaru would be a far more devastating opponent to face. The one thing that stands above all else in the Naruto universe isn't brute strength or big brain intelligence, nor is it even an expansive jutsu arsenal. It's hacks, and Obito has it in spades. While ripping out someone's soul is pretty hacks, and being able to revive your dead comrades that are also kind of puppets or whatever is, is pretty hacks, and while inextinguishable black flames are hacks, and a sword that seals away anything it punctures are hacks, there's a reason why Obito was the leader of the Akatsuki, and there's a reason why Itachi and Pain never tried to take him down while they were alive. One word, three syllables. Kamui. In a battle against either of the other two shinobi here, Obito's Kamui would just be far too difficult for either of them to overcome, even with whatever advantages they might have. While Pain has the physical advantage, it's really not by that much, and the gap in durability gets made up for in regeneration and intangibility, and the stamina gap is really not big enough to make a massive difference here. And while Itachi is definitely smarter than Obito, Obito's intellect is certainly nothing to scoff at, and whatever gap there is between them and intelligence is made up for in other areas. Feats and abilities and scaling aside, even statements throughout the series make it very clear that Obito is stronger than both Itachi and Pain. For example, Minato openly remarks to Naruto that while Pain is strong, Obito is more of a threat. And when people talk about Itachi versus Obito, lots of people attempt to use this panel here as evidence for Itachi being stronger than Obito. However, it's very clear when you take into consideration all of the surrounding context that when Obito says, fortunately I was able to keep a few secrets even from him, if I hadn't I'd be dead right now, that he's talking about Itachi being able to do something similar to what Conan did in devising a plan to take advantage of Kamui's weaknesses. I mean, Obito knows how smart Itachi is, and he says this right after Itachi planted the Amaterasu in Sasuke's eye and he got hit by it, so he was responding to a crafty plan that Itachi put together. And another panel that comes up is this one here, where Obito says that now that Itachi is out of the way, Konoha isn't off limits. But you have to do some serious mental gymnastics to get to the conclusion that this means that Itachi could just defeat Obito in a straight up fight. At most, it implies that Obito didn't want to deal with having to face Itachi unnecessarily. And this becomes even clearer when you understand that Obito knew Itachi didn't have much time left, as he points out to Pain in this panel here. Therefore, he knew all he had to do is wait a while and Itachi's sickness would do the work for him. So why battle Itachi and risk some kind of injury or just unnecessary strife when he can just wait it out? And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that Itachi and Pain can't win. Both Itachi and Pain have plenty of win conditions with their incredibly versatile and potent jutsu arsenals. But at the end of the day, none of those win conditions are immune to being overcome by Kamui. And could Itachi or Pain devise a plan to take down Obito given enough time and information? Sure, but the same could be said in reverse as well. So in conclusion, you can't beat what you can't hit, and without substantial prep time, Obito simply isn't getting hit by either of these dudes. But okay, so Obito is the strongest in the Akatsuki, whoop de doo I, I think most of us knew that, and if you didn't, if you didn't, I made this video for you, and I hope that you understand that he is stronger than these two, and please stop using these panels as evidence. But anyway, uh, what about the other two? How would I rank them? Well, I guess you'll just have to wait until I either make an Akatsuki ranked or Itachi vs. Pain video. Let me know which one in the comments you guys want to see, but until then, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Have an awesome day.